Hey everybody, welcome back, Alex here. So I've decided to use the M1 Max MacBook Pro as my daily driver, at least for the next few years. By the way, daily driver, who came up with that? Is this thing driving me somewhere? Where is it driving me? I don't know. But I gotta say that I made that decision before even trying out the laptops. So when I placed the order for a few of these 2021 MacBooks immediately after the October keynote, I fully expected to replace my 2014 iMac with the M1 Max MacBook Pro. But after all my testing on this channel, and you might have seen just a few videos of my comparisons here, I'm kind of starting to regret my decision just a little bit. All right, let's back up here for a second. Why the heck would I even get a maxed out M1 Max machine with 64 gigs of RAM and 32 cores of GPU? That's a lot. Am I going to use it? Well, here's the story behind it. I maxed out the RAM really for historical reasons, mainly because for the past many years that I've been using Macs since 2013, actually, uh, before that, I was a strictly build my own PC kind of guy. Since then, I've been maxing out the RAM every time I get a chance and I've never regretted it. In fact, quite the opposite. I've always come across a situation where the extra RAM came in handy. This was especially true when I ran multiple Windows virtual machines and was doing SharePoint development at the time. By the way, one of the reasons I initially switched to a Mac is because I got better performance running a full multi-server virtual development environment on a MacBook than I got on a fully specced out Lenovo workstation at the time. Anyway, when virtualizing, the 64 gigs of RAM gets gobbled up pretty quickly and I never wanted to run out of RAM for a simple reason that I bought a lower spec machine and saved a couple of hundred dollars when the productivity loss was going to cost me thousands potentially. By the way, I use Parallels to run Windows on my Mac now. Link and coupon code in the description below if you're interested to check it out. It ends uh, by the end of Christmas, I believe. The link will still work. You'll get a 14-day trial, but if you want to purchase, you get 10% off. Anyway, later when I started doing mobile development, I realized that the extra RAM helped out there as well, since running simulators and emulators was also gobbling up a lot of RAM, especially emulators. Y you know what I mean? Android devs know what I mean. Okay, well, that explains the RAM, and it also kind of explains why I didn't fully switched to the M1 MacBook Air last year simply because I was waiting for a machine with more resources. Now, what about that dual memory bandwidth that I got with the Max versus the Pro and the 32 GPU cores? Well, that was simply FOMO to be honest with you. I really don't have the need for those extra GPU cores. Now, what I would like to think is that because I do a lot of work with videos these days, that it somehow helps me, but I haven't really been able to quantify it. So I ended up spending over a thousand dollars more on this M1 Max, and it appears that that was mostly because I was trying to future-proof my workflow, but I don't know why yet. All right, so why do I have M1 Pro Envy? Well, so far, all my testing that I've been doing, and that's with the 10-core M1 Max machine and the 10-core M1 Pro machine, there isn't a single developer-oriented workflow that I found where the M1 Max has an advantage. Now, I'm sure there are some benefits. Maybe I just haven't discovered them yet. But for now, I feel like I've kind of overspent on this machine for no good reason. Now, that's my developer workflow. As for my video workflow, I use Adobe's suite of tools. And while they are now built for Apple Silicon and they do seem a bit faster, especially Photoshop, I don't feel like it's that much faster. And the instability of Premiere Pro, the video editing software I use, kind of negates any benefit that could be gained by its speed. There is one thing that's so much faster and and that is rendering the final videos when I'm done with them. <laughs> but I'm not going to go there since there's a tons of channels already covering that stuff. I just think the rendering would be just as fast on the M1 Pro as it is on the M1 Max. Anyway, fast enough for me, for my needs. Now, the M2 leaks have started, so I'm going to go and have M2 NV now. So I just wanted to share this info with you as a developer to developer. And if you're a developer considering getting the M1 Max, do it for the right reasons and not just because, well, you have FOMO. Hopefully this was helpful. I'll see you all in the next one. And happy holidays.